This is a sign that uh, one of the men who used to come to the church uh, made for us or had made for us. We put it out on the street every Sunday. But uh, as you can tell, we don't have any handicapped accessibility, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, makes some limitations, but uh, we're very thankful to be able to meet in this place. We have, uh, when we first came into the building, it was really kind of cool to see that it was really kind of church-like, you know, with a tall ceiling and stuff. And I'm going to show you some paint, paint peeling up on the, uh, the ceiling up towards the, the front of the room here because that's a story of God's goodness. Um, when we first moved in, the, the roof was leaking, and so up in the attic where there was buckets. <laughs> Uh, buckets catching water. There was tarps trying to keep the water away, and it was, it was really, kind of a sad deal. <laughs> and um, there was a woman from First Evangelical Free Church, a sister church that passed away, included us in her will, and um, included us in her will and gave us like $20,000 and we were able to pay for that roof with that. So, wow, God has been so good to us. Also, in this, in this room here, it wasn't the way it is at the moment. There was uh, two rows of red theater seats on, on both the left side and the right side of the room facing inwards and an old wool carpet. Anyway, in order to get rid of those platforms after a number of years, we, uh, we hired a company to, to come and cut them and turned out uh, well, there was a little bit of asbestos in those tiles and therefore um, they didn't do it properly and we were shut down for like eight weeks. <laughs> we were uh, kept out of this room. So. Long story short, God provided. We didn't know what was going to happen. We, all these chairs had just been donated. We had them one week, and they um, said that we might potentially lose these chairs um, because of that asbestos thing. But praise to God, we didn't have to. We could, they cleaned up the chairs just fine. Uh, we sent another letter out to our friends, and uh, God was so good, he sent in an in the first week, like $22,000. We ended up paying $16,000 to get that contractor's mess cleaned up. And it was, uh, it was quite an ordeal, but God provided us to be able to do that and to be able to do some other kinds of renovation, like uh, we redid the stage and uh, we you know, got to redo the floor and put in some lighting and repaint in other parts of the building. So anyway, that was, uh, that was a God story, a couple of God stories that I remember here in this room. So praise him for that. Uh, we got some, some new lighting, you know, in these rooms that we've been able to use, you know, for youth, for Sunday school. Uh, we have a, a third floor where there's a preschool and nursery. So that's been, a, that's been a blessing. I'll just quick show you the downstairs because it's like God, God had the Masons do a bunch of work so that it would be more usable for us. I think back in the 60s, they had the pillars removed from the basement here. So the, there's an old basement with lots of pillars holding up the floor the ceiling and uh, they put in they took those out and put in these I-beams so these little lowered sections of the ceiling are that so really it's been a it's been a blessing we were just praying for you know that the Lord would give us a room like this to use in many ways like we were used to renting but God did a whole lot more than that in giving us this he gave us uh, uh, you know a big space to use for our kids and youth ministry for dinners, you know, outreach kind of things. Um, he also gave us, you know, a pretty nice kitchen to use. So we're really blessed with that. And if it looks a little junky, you know, maybe God's calling you to come and uh, help us 
clean up. We could use some help in areas like, you know, building maintenance and regular cleaning and, you know, working with youth, working with children, um, working with music, working with finances, uh, leading Bible studies, you know, all kinds of uh, opportunities here in the city. And that's, that's one of the, the cool things about, you know, an, an urban ministry like this. It's that, you know, everybody is needed. And no matter what the role that people are playing, whether that's, you know, whether that's in music or in hospitality or greeting somebody at the door, all those things are important. But our main goal is to invest in people, to bring them to Christ and to invest in people to have them grow in Christ. And so, um, once again, it kind of feels like we're, it, we're starting over um, in this ministry. Um, over the past few years, we've had quite a change in our, um, in our population, in our attendance and things. And so, we're just asking God what he has for us in this next chapter. And we really feel that he's not done with us yet and that uh, we, we want to rededicate ourselves to making disciples uh, for him on the east side of St. Paul who will be loved, set free, and changed by Jesus. So thank you again. And uh, just want to close with, with showing you the inside of this office here. So hang on just a second. This is... Uh, Something that somebody painted on the wall here in this little office it used to be a coat room, but we had a person that was a very part-time administrative assistant, and this woman who was very artistic asked, "What kind of what verse do you want painted on the wall?" And little did she know that <laughs> the person asked for an entire paragraph from Ephesians chapter three, and uh, so yeah, this is a great prayer, a great prayer for us. And let me just read that as I finish up here. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.